All right, now that we're here, we want to get the lighting right. And I'm going to use static lighting to do it because that's how we can get the best GI and the most realistic looking lighting going on. Okay, so what we want to do, what we can do is just change the light source to static if we want. Of course, then it's going to be baked in, but I'm okay with that. Now, if we're doing a light bake, we need to make sure all our light map settings are very good. So the best way to do that is go into where it says lit right here, click on it. Go to optimization view modes and go to light map density. Okay, and as I've explained before, anything that's blue is very low resolution and the shadows are going to look really choppy and pixelated on there because the light map is so small and your lighting just will look bad in general. So probably the easiest way to fix this is to just go to all these different objects and override the light material and turn it up until it's nice and green. So you'll notice that it tops out at 4096. That is the maximum it can go, and it's still just barely hitting green. So that one would need to be mapped better in SketchUp in order to make it work properly. This is too mu too big of an object to map with a 40 by 96 map and make everything high resolution. So keep that kind of thing in mind. We can select one of these columns and then go to select matching all classes. Okay, and it selects all the columns that are similar here. We can overwrite all of those together by hard coding it in to say 512. Looks good, maybe 1024. Okay. Now you'll see the mapping isn't exactly right on all these things. That's where SketchUp is going to fall short. It doesn't have all the tools necessary to make this stuff just right. Let's select a bunch of this stuff and get, make sure everything is being rendered at high enough resolution. Okay, everything's high enough except for this wall here, so let's do it individually. Go higher. Okay, good, let's put this door. Okay, so we'll just go through this and do this with all these different objects. We're looking good now. Another thing you could do is re-import right here. You could go to re-import, and it will bring in everything all together, and what you can do is here is make it on the static mesh options, Make it a minimum light resolution of, we'll say 256, max resolution of 4096. Okay, and you can re-import it again. Now you don't want to get carried away with that because you want to put it as low as you possibly can get away with because that will really speed up your light bake times and all those kind of things. So you don't want to just make it all super crazy high resolution. But that is a way on the import settings you can change. Okay, I'm just going to go manually through and pick all these up, get everything working right. We'll uh, Pause the video and I'll see you on the other side. Oh, there is one other way you can modify all this at the same time too. You can go into content, caster, polex. Okay, and go into here into geometries where you imported with your datasmith, right? Select all the geometries that are associated with this datasmith import and then go to asset actions and say bulk edit via property matrix. Okay, and all, all the way buried down under here all these selected you can change the minimum light map 256 okay and this isn't going to change the overriding that we've already done it'll just change the minimum on all those to 256 okay everything is good now if you look at here light map density everything is at least green that bottom one is still a little bit problematic but it's barely pushing into the green so that's good okay so what do we do now everything says preview on it you'll notice Preview, 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 because we haven't baked the light yet. So now with all the light map settings correct, we can bake the light. Let's go to build, light quality, preview, and just build the lighting only. Okay, this will take significantly longer after you up the resolution of all the light maps. However, with this file, it shouldn't take that long, depending on your computer. And I'll show you some settings we can do to make it even better that will, of course, up your light bake settings, your light bake times even more, but it can up the quality of your rendering. Okay, after the light bake, it's looking like this, which is pretty cool, but overly bright. I put in, remember we need to put in some certain things like a post-process volume. I dragged it in here, scaled it up to enclose my scene. We can then go into the post-process volume and change some of the settings to make it maybe look more correct. Maybe not so exposed. Oh, we want this one. You gotta be inside of the post-processing thing for it to work. And then I've also been adjusting the atmospheric fog. Yeah, I can turn that up and down. 
get too high, then we're going to have a lot of blooming going on. That's okay, though. I kind of like this. Now, you see with Data Smith, there's all these little white dots around. Those are basically uh, scene root actors, basically like dummy object. If you hit G for game mode, then you won't see those anymore. Anyway, the lighting is pretty nice here. I like this. If you look up under the eaves, everything's looking good up here. This is cool. Okay, if you go into lighting only mode right here or detail lighting and you see everything is is lit quite nicely we have a nice shadow coming across those stairs okay and you could go in and and correct a lot of this stuff and make it even better what i was showing you this already took me quite a while to do this because my computer isn't very powerful here but i've showed you in other settings too where you could go into or in other videos go into the light mass settings here and up your your quality settings with these five things right here. Okay, so that's another option for you. But we're gonna go with this. We've got our baked lighting. We've got our our scene here. It looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do now is, well, what's cool about this is from SketchUp to now, you know, it took us a few minutes to get to a point where we can walk around in here. There's no light in here because, there's no light bake in here because all I have is that one outside light and this door is closed. So inside is not lit. I could put some interior lights in there and bake again. Okay, but the point is with this, we now have a nice kind of fully rendered scene that we can walk around, which is better than what we had in SketchUp. Now, if I took this and added a collision to it, make sure there's a collision on this by going into the static mesh. We can show simple collisions here. There's nothing there. We can then go and add box simplified collision, right? And then there it is. Okay, save. Now we can take a nav mesh. Nav mesh bounds volume. And intersect it here. Make sure we're not in game mode so we can see it. Hit P to show us the preview of the navigation mesh. And you can see where the navigation mesh is hitting the collision. Then we now have navigation. So let's make it so we can navigate all out in front of this temple here. So let's just scale it nice and big, right? So we've seen all this before with other VR videos, but now, now we can navigate with VR. The only other thing we need would be the VR pawn, right? Because we started with the VR template, it should be in here. So motion controller pawn, if you start typing in motion controller, it's right here. We'll be able to put that in here, right there. We want it right at ground level there. And we need to make sure that it is the one that we are going to be possessing. Our, play, our controls are gonna possess that pawn on start if we set it to auto possess player zero. Let's see if that worked. Okay, wow, standing in here is awesome because you see how enormous this place is. I don't know if it's at the right scale or not, but wow, this is cool. I think it is probably. And it's amazing. So this is where VR is just awesome. So from SketchUp to VR and walking around. Let's see if I can get some navigation going on. From SketchUp to walking around your model in Unreal Engine, uh, you know, it took a matter of few minutes. And here we are. This is a powerful tool. This is why Unreal Engine is awesome. There are other softwares out there that make it even easier and faster, but they don't have the advanced capabilities that Unreal Engine does with light baking and blueprints and those kind of things. So they are great for doing basic things, but when you want to get custom and when you want to get advanced, you'll find yourself running into roadblocks. That's my opinion. But here you go, Unreal Engine. This is the real deal. Bake lighting, fantastic looking. Okay. And that's just with basic SketchUp materials. You could make this look so much more advanced with really nice materials. And you could really get into that. You could make, I mean, the sky's the limit. You could use blueprints to make things interactive in here. You could make this into an animation where you're standing here on the porch and the, the temple is crumbling and falling down if you really wanted to go crazy. But uh, yeah, so basically the point of this was to show how easily you can get SketchUp into Unreal Engine, have it basically rendered, and be able to walk around it and navigate using virtual reality. Okay, from the next video, we'll see some other things that we can do with this exact same file. Because it doesn't stop here. We can walk around in VR, we can spit out screenshots,
but the nice thing is with Unreal Engine, we have so much more capabilities too. So next we're going to look at spitting out some animations using this same file.